everyone. Today we are here in a place called Siwa and this is by far the most remote place that we've been to in Egypt so far. We came from Cairo this morning by a bus. We got the late night bus yesterday and it cost $13 per person and overall it took 12 hours to get here. And it took that long because there's just so many checkpoints, so many stops. I think about four times we got asked at different bus stops to show our tickets. And then after that there was four like security checkpoints with military where they asked to see your passport, stuff like that. So the whole thing just took ages. We haven't really had any of those security checkpoints traveling around Egypt so far, only coming to this region for, yeah, for some reason. And this place is really far west. It's almost in Libya. The border of Libya is pretty close to here. And the place that we're staying is called Alba Bencho Guest House. We paid $50 on booking.com. And we love it because it's like a traditional, authentic desert building. Through here we have a pretty big bathroom. You'll see on the outside it looks even better from the outside. And straight away we already decided to book it for an extra day, didn't we? Yeah, yes, because we're also very tired from the bus so we couldn't enjoy it today until now we're going out only now and that's why we decided to stay an, an extra night here and since we are booking this extra night directly with the manager we're paying $35, not the $50 that we paid for the first night on yeah. Booked.com. Yeah, we didn't haggle with him. He just said, oh, if you want an extra yeah. night, you just pay $35. So. Yes, because I guess they, they won't have the fees that the hotel usually has to pay when the, uh, the booking is made through the website. So yeah, it's a great deal and it also includes breakfast. So this is how the place looks from the outside of our room. I already hit my head on that, so... Yeah, it's kind of a uh, low, got a bit of like a, a courtyard down there. And yeah, just like these little alleyways. Really cool though. Even here you can see what seems to be some old steps that you can't go up anymore from the original building. And it's all made from a uh, mud brick. So that's made with like uh, water and mud and then it dries. I think they also add salt. It dries and becomes kind of like uh, cement. So from what the manager told me, all this side here is from like the 12th century. So like 800, 900 years old. And I think this is a more like modern part, but they made it the same style. Alright, so we've now entered the old original city. So this place is called Shali Fortress. And Shali in the local Siwi language, which is what the locals spoke here, uh, means city. But check this out, it's crazy. It's like all these little tiny pathways, stairways everywhere. And then these would have been like the buildings. Obviously it's all in uh, ruins now. So no roofs or anything, but just tiny little pathways everywhere. Guess this would have been a building where Carol is as well. A room maybe? Yes, yeah, so you can see this old town stretches all the way back there. It's pretty huge, a lot bigger than I thought it was. Carol, this is basically just like a maze, right? Yeah, <laughs> some parts uh, there's no end. We have to go back. Yeah, you go upstairs and then mm -hmm. dead end. Might have been just to a person's house, right? Can't, you can't really tell what was a house before or, or a wall. But yeah, you can walk pretty much everywhere. And I read that there's a mosque here. I think it's this mosque here. And apparently it's the oldest mosque in the world made out of mud. So I'm guessing it is that one. And we saw it's open, isn't it? People are praying there. Yeah, yeah, there was a sign saying that if you're not gonna pray, don't go inside. There's the prayers once again. So the people that uh, lived here were actually Berbers. 
not Arabs, and apparently they had more in common with uh, people from Libya than Egypt, with it also being so close to Libya, because Libya has a big uh, population of Berbers, much more than Egypt has. And Berbers are basically like the indigenous people of Northern Africa, so you still find a lot of Berbers in like Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, and yeah, there will be a few here as well. How's the view from this side? Even better. <laughs> oh yeah, a bit against the sun? Yeah, unfortunately. But this side does look better like Carol said. Actually here, there seems to be some proper houses, right? Yeah, I'm trying Less to ruins. understand. Uh, because there, you can see some windows, so I think it's modern. But I don't know, still some ruins over there, but still some houses. So by now you're probably wondering what happened to this place. Why is it all in ruins like this? So from what I read in 1926, not even that long ago, there was like three days of extremely heavy rain, which is rare to this region. And that, yeah, basically ruined a lot of the buildings. So all the people that lived here relocated to other areas. So you probably realize since nobody is here, this is pretty like off the beaten path of Egypt. Still not a lot of people come here. It is a mission to get here and not very comfortable. And yeah, there's just a few tourists on our bus, still many locals. I think the majority were still local. So yeah, that's why nobody is around here at all. Donkey. <laughs> it's a cute donkey, isn't it? <laughs> Having his lunch. Yeah, so I think this is more of an area where uh, people live now. The area that we could see from above that was like a mix of ruins, but also, yeah, clearly people live here. Yeah, this is definitely one of the most bizarre places we've ever been to. Like we're not even in the fortress anymore, but even outside, all this area kind of looks the, the same. So even inside of the cliff, you have these like caves that I guess people have made. Yeah, I wonder what this is for. We're in some mysterious place here. There's another one here. Yeah, there's one here as well. Oh, this one goes deep. Is our maybe it was just houses? Then you don't have to build a roof or walls or anything. You just make a hole. Yeah, there's there's one up there, isn't there? Yeah, I think I, I saw some holes when we were from the other viewpoint. I saw some holes and I was wondering what what were those? Or maybe, like I said, they were houses. Yeah, man, it's just crazy how much things were destroyed though. So this is the more modern part of the town, not like the, the old town. We're just looking for a place to eat right now, which is hard because like we mentioned in other videos, it's Ramadan. So even the restaurant at our place isn't open, right? Yeah, I, I'm not sure the, the manager said it would be open, but 
since he was not there, we don't know. Yeah, the other guy said it wasn't. The guy that we just spoke to right now. Yeah, I guess we need to find a, a like a Christian place. Yeah, if there's like a Christian owner, then it's probably open still. It is quite quiet around here though. Not really that many people around at all. buy some bread mm -hmm. <laughs> so we found a spot that's open Tekeyet Elami restaurant and cafe got some funky music going on here but really cool look at the style of this place as well everywhere around here has some cool style so right here it looks like there'd normally be some sort of fire pit or something maybe at night you also got these cool areas in here to sit down in the shade. I like it. How are the prices? Touristy? <laughs> yeah, but not so bad. So me and Carol are both gonna go for some couscous. Carol's gonna get the vegetable one for 70 and I'll get the chicken one for 80. So pretty good prices. going on a tour for the day it's gonna cost uh, 350 Egyptian pounds in this cool tuk-tuk here I like the, the style of it <laughs> yeah it's pretty comfortable as well isn't it uh -huh, yeah. extra cushion yeah I like the, the carpet yeah the designs uh -huh. so I think we're gonna be going to loads of different spots not even sure where we're going but yeah we'll find out during this video So this is the main reason that we wanted to come here to Siwa for the salt pools. So all this ground right here right now is uh, salt, like kind of like brown salt. So they have these pools that they let you swim in and that's the coolest one there, that, that mini one. And it's going to be our first time entering yeah, the water. Yeah, we've seen some places like this in Mexico but we didn't swim. Now it's going to be our first time going in. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Look at these like the little salt crystals. So I mean all around here it took about 20-25 minutes, 30 minutes to get out here I think. Loads are just salt pools. And they obviously use it like uh, salt works don't they? Yeah they do. Collect the salt. Oh, I can't wait to get in that one. <laughs> I, I sit down to go in? Yeah. It's sit first? Yeah. How deep is it? It's not you shouldn't you want to go out down. She watch and bring you up. Okay. Yeah, float, you float. Uh, how, you know open the eyes, this is so too much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool? No, it's very nice. Yeah. Oh refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Floaty. No way. This is our first time well, this. in salt water. <laughs> like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's such a bizarre sensation. Yeah. I didn't know how it would feel, but it does feel weirder than expected. <laughs> Not drown at all. Yeah. This is amazing. All right, Carol's turn for the experience. You're gonna love the temperature as well, especially since outside it's like 40. <laughs> It's not very sharp, right? The the salt there, it's kind of soft. In Baja California, saw this was like a, a knife. How do I go? Just jump in. You'll start floating straight away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Feels weird, right? Yeah, it's a very weird feeling. It's like, it's like you're in space. <laughs> yeah, you got. It's pushing me to the front and then if I do this push push me 
like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like there's something pushing you all the time. Yeah, there's like a force, right? <laughs> <laughs> Still haven't got used to how this feels. <laughs> how you doing over there? All good. No, another thing as well, it's so quiet here. There's not a single sound of anything. Yeah, we saw another car with tourists, but I think they went to another pool. Yeah, so. yeah, that's a good thing as well. They, they uh, separate you out, I think. Not that there's that many tourists here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna try out the bigger one as well. And completely covered in salt, look at that. He does bring a big bottle of water though, so you can clean off all the salt. Oh, it's extra salty too. Yeah. Wow, this one looks super beautiful as well. Right, let's go in here. Yeah, so this one's a bit different because it's not just an instant drop. Got to walk on the, the salt a bit. I think this one is uh, more shallow. That one back there, I couldn't touch the ground. <laughs> wow, the water is very cold here. It's cold there? Yeah. Nice though? Yeah, it is. I wonder if that's the spot that's coming out of the ground or something. Yeah, maybe. It looks deeper. Yeah, I can, I can see it looks deeper from here. <laughs> this part, right? Yeah, can you feel it? Oh yeah, straight away. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's way colder. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Weird. Yeah. Nicer though. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> the colder the better right now in this desert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this right here has got to be like the, the hidden gem of Egypt. Time to take this salt off. <laughs> yeah. Whew. It comes off really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So our driver just collected some salt blocks for us. Souvenirs. Yeah. <laughs> free, free souvenirs. Nice bumpy ride. <laughs> Very bumpy. <laughs> Now we come to another really cool spot. So this is called Cleopatra's Spring. And it's like just in the middle of some local village, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Like I knew this place existed, but I thought it was some sort of uh, like tourist spot that you had to pay to enter, but it's just right in the middle of pretty much a road. So around here you got the souvenir stores as well. I always love the designs on the rugs. Beautiful designs. <laughs> Alright, time to cool down once again. And clean my hair. <laughs> and clean your hair, yeah. Yeah, this, this is gonna be the proper shower now because, yeah, we're still kind of covered in salt. What a beautiful place though with all these palm trees everywhere. Paradise Oasis this place. Is it cold? Yeah. I, I think it's warmer than the other place though. Yeah. It is, right? Yeah, so this is a popular spot with the local kids. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 
Oh, I, I, I miss the floaty water. Yeah. Now That's I, the only problem of this one. Yeah, now I have to do some work again. Yeah. <laughs> the dive. <laughs> So now we've come to a village called Agumi, a very traditional looking village. And we come to a spot here called uh, the Oracle Temple. And this place is important because it's where the coronation of Alexander the Great was, known as Amun Revelation Temple. So Amun is one of the ancient Egyptian gods. And this dates back to the 26th dynasty. 663 to 535 BC and this cost 50 Egyptian pounds to enter yeah so I'll give you a better view from the middle so that is the mosque there very similar to the mud mosque that we saw before the view from here is awesome oh really? Oh, you know why oh wow Oh, because now we're really close to the date palms, aren't we? Yeah, and there's like a big mountain. Yeah, it's kind of reddish, rock. isn't it? Yeah, I don't know what that is actually. But... And here you can start to see the desert in the background. The white yellow desert. And we think this must be the main oracle temple. There's no sign here, but it sure, sure looks like some sort of more important building. I think I saw in the pictures that it, it was this place right here. So somewhere around here is the ground where Alexander the Great was coronated in 331 BC. So it is said that Alexander the Great passed through here during his war with the Persians. So he was coming this way to defeat the Persians. And this is where he was finally recognized as the great king of Egypt, the great ruler of Egypt. So from the back as well, also really amazing views. Looks like that's a school back there. So I guess this is more the main part of the, the village here. Way more houses on this side. So we did mention at the start of the video just how remote this place is. And apparently only in 1980, they even made a road to this place. So it was never even accessible by road until the 1980s, which wasn't long ago at all. So we're now at our final stop of the tour. Really cool place for the sunset. It's called Fatnas Island. So we're right on this lake here. And yeah, just loads of cool places to sit down and enjoy the sunset. They have a few bars around here. Even got some hammocks as well. So we just gotta pick a spot now. Hello. Hello. This reminds me of those spots in like Goa. Yeah. <laughs> Where you sit on the floor. 
So we got these drinks from the bar. So I got this, which is uh, dates with milk. I think he said there's also Nescafe in there or something. So I don't know if that is like a uh, coffee too. And Carol got the guava. Mm -hmm. Tasty. Yeah. Yeah. Guava with milk. Oh, it also has milk as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all the drinks were 35. Yeah, I think there is some uh, coffee in there. Interesting mix, right? Like coffee, dates, and milk. So it's now two days after those last shots that you saw in Siwa. So the day after we were planning on going back to Cairo and spending a day in Cairo, our last day in Egypt. But we couldn't really be bothered with the hassle. It's a bit chaotic in Cairo, so we wanted somewhere more relaxed. And on the way to Siwa, we noticed that there was this place here called Masa Matru, which is like a beach resort place. So we decided to spend the last day here instead. So yeah, we came here for some relaxation, but there was only one problem, which I'll be able to show you right now. So as you could see, we basically had like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre going on from our veranda. It turned out that they were doing like some work on the hotel, so it wasn't relaxing at all. So this is the hotel here, Jewel Beach. So yeah, they have this big tower here. Today it's not so noisy and we're in that room over there. And the bizarre thing is we're the only people in the hotel. Yeah, it's a big hotel and it's uh, like a four star, or, I don't know, five stars kind of expensive and there's only us here and even when we were walking in like the town the bus stop and everything there was no people around like no tourists or anything but I don't know maybe this place is not as famous as we thought it would be <laughs> yeah it's like a dead beach resort yeah. town uh -huh. yeah so this big hotel all to ourselves but obviously we were a bit disappointed though because we paid like hundred and twenty dollars way more expensive than any other place and then they had all this construction work going on so i even complained i think it's only the second time we've ever complained about a hotel while we're staying in a hotel we don't usually really care that much but yeah since we wanted to stay in the hotel and not leave and relax around here we didn't really want this like chainsaw noise going on and also the other thing I complained about, look at this. It's full of trash everywhere. The entire beach, just loads of rubbish all over the place. They don't have beach beds or anything. So yeah, I complained about all these things because it's like, what am I paying for? You know what I mean? But then on the other side, look at this. Look how beautiful this water is. So this is the Mediterranean side of Egypt and the water is absolutely amazing. The beach is beautiful, it goes all the way around. There's like a huge white sandbank over there. It's actually kind of misty today, so yesterday it looked even nicer, but super beautiful. And in about an hour, we're about to leave here now and head back to Cairo, and then we'll fly to the new country. So I'll probably just do a recap of Egypt, overall the things we've liked and we haven't liked. So obviously the parts that we haven't liked is like the hustlers, and the, the scams, I mean, even this to me feels a bit like a scam. They charge us the full price and pretty much not even operating as a hotel. It's like we're staying in a closed hotel. So yeah, that does weigh you down and um, a lot of tourists, it does annoy them. We've, we've heard so many tourists talking about it that they're fed up with the, the scammers and the hustlers, but it's mainly just those people that are uh, working with tourism that are like that. If you go around in the quieter villages where people work with other things, everyone's like super nice, super friendly, and we've actually felt very comfortable. When you're walking around, people don't really stare. Yeah, you just feel very comfortable. I think a lot of people that come here, they just encounter the hustlers, and then they get a bad impression of uh, Egyptian people, but yeah, they're not really all like that. 
And then the best part's just obviously the ancient historic stuff. Probably the most impressive place we've ever been for historic things, just seeing it in person. Absolutely incredible. And all the sites that we went to were amazing, so yeah, you get places like this, the amazing beaches. Siwa was insane, right? Just some surreal oasis town. And the River Nile cruise as well, just an amazing experience. So yeah, it's very spectacular. It kind of reminds us of traveling in India in a way, where it's a mix of extremely spectacular things but then you also get a bit of the hassle of which wears you out mentally so yeah it's a mix of the two and then i think other than that we've absolutely loved the food right yeah food everywhere is so delicious in this hotel as well yeah like big portions all the time we I can never we, finish it no and i think we've probably gained some weight here because <laughs> it's so good like and even the desserts the desserts are always great so the food is absolutely good here in egypt yeah, I bash this hotel, but the food is amazing here as well, and, and the service. Yeah, people are nice as well. Yeah. Just the the fact that it's uh, it's, they shouldn't be charging that price if it, there are some constructions ongoing. Yeah, uh, and everything's than, dirty. Yeah, other than that, it's okay. <laughs> And then the, the other thing that's good to talk about is for uh, women, right? A lot of people ask like, oh, how is it for, for if you're a woman? So Carol can probably reply that. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not sure how it is for like solo travelers. But for me, I was with Chris, but I never had any big issues. Before coming here, I was reading about uh, how the situation is for women here and I was a bit worried. But uh, I think I had a better uh, experience than I was expecting. Uh, I think there were some like cat calling, but just not only like twice, right? Yeah, nothing bad. And I even talked with a solo female traveler from the US, and she said she's been here for two weeks and she never had any issues. It was all good. So you guys probably noticed that I was wearing like some long sleeve uh, shirts and um, sometimes it's scarves to not not show my the shoulders so i think if you do that you're gonna be fine you don't attract any unwanted attention yeah and yeah it was it was uh, it was a great experience i didn't feel unsafe uh, anytime yeah yeah in general like i said before people don't really stare that much or anything so it was just very comfortable i think and that's gonna be it for egypt then so yeah this was two weeks overall this trip i can probably show you a map of all the places we visited we did cover a lot of ground in two weeks probably be better to do what we did in uh, three weeks we did it kind of like rushed and yeah we got pretty tired but yeah, i'm glad that we saw all the spots so if you like this video and all the egypt series uh, drop a like to support us stick around for more videos subscribe to this channel if you like to see more of them follow us on instagram and we'll see you around